of all, I think your analysis was very straight line. The street doesn't run in a straight line. Kid, you cannot tell your neighbor he is stealing ducks when you are stealing phones. As High Commissioner, I was wrong. As Charandas Prasad, I reacted naturally how any person would have. I did not come here for food for that kind of abuse. I did not come here for that kind of abuse. If you're gonna go down that road, I'll walk off. But it's all okay once they're talking. If they were talking, I could not have been here today. You got ADHD. I got that. No, calm down, down. Calm down. I think I've done enough in terms of taking our team um, out of trouble from losing. Come on, Lord Taylor. You got that's good. I'm reading the script now, and the first person that comes to my mind to play a detective, yes, but an erratic detective, is Rodriguez. Why you not feel good supper in young? Why you man and supper woman? Look, you deal with us. You deal with us. We must encourage platforms like this because it brings together different people and allows for discussions. To, to take place in our country on a multiplicity of fundamental issues. Uh, Kid, um, you apologizing for no, something no, 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 you no, think no. I did is wrong. I don't no. want you to do that and you should not have done that. Welcome to the Gildari for the Kisun Show. This is a live program. We come to you live from the studio of Daybreak News. If you in front of your smart TV or you have your smartphone with you, please go to Guyanese Critic Facebook page, YouTube or Daybreak News and you will see the program live. Thanks for being with us. Leonard Gildari is in the house this evening and welcome to him. Um, when the cameras pan on the entire uh, um, guest and host here, on the table you will see three hats. One of the hats has the marking Minister of Religion. Next to that hat has the marking Minister of Government. And then in between those two hats is the marking Practicing Politician. So our guest this evening wear three hats and we're going to do some acrobatics because you have to be taking off one hat, putting on another based on the questions. Our guest this evening is someone who is in the news every day. That's given the economy and given the take off of this country in a direction in which you want to know which is the appropriate word, supersonic, uh, accelerating, what have you. Our guest this evening is the Senior Minister of Public Works, Bishop Juan Edge Hill. And I am going to hand over to Gildari by, to deal with the questions that will take more than an hour. Construction, bridges, roads. Um, Minister Edge Hill, we'd like to inform him that we've been doing this program for 16 months. And on Fridays, we have call-in program. And no matter what is the topic, the calls are always on roads, construction, bridges, contractors. So tonight, we're going to exhaust the hour of that, with that. But I'm going to start in an unusual way. I am going to ask, I don't know what hat the minister is wearing now, but I'm going to ask him to take off his politician hat, his minister hat, and put on the religious hat, because I want to start up with an unusual question, and then Gildari will come in with the breaking up of these roads. Minister Edgel, as a man of the cloth, there are question marks in the 21st century about people's adherence to religion. Is religion still popular? Are people still flocking to the churches worldwide? Your experience? Well, I'm not sure I could help you with answering your question, because I don't practice a religion. Christianity is not a religion. Christianity is a relationship that a person has with their God. 
um, religion is man's search of God. And, and in man's search of God, they find different ways to navigate that. We believe in Christianity. It was God who reached man and found man in his sin, give him an opportunity to repent and give him an opportunity to get back into right relationship with God. So, but coming to what is basically the understanding of the whole world in terms of religion, religion has played very important roles. Um, and in some instances, it has been the source of division, contention, and wars. And that is not because of the religion. It is because of the personalities and the practices, practitioners of that religion. We have fundamentalists, people who want to interpret scriptures um, to suit their own agenda, uh, pick and choose how they will interpret things. But the central theme of uh, a, a religious global worldview is supposed to help mankind um, to improve his moral, ethical life and standards, to adhere to fundamental principles of respect for neighbor, respect for elders, um, practice the goodness of looking out for the unfortunate, being a voice for people who can't speak for themselves, um, being a champion for change, and, and ensuring that exploitation, injustice, and corruption don't take over society, but in mankind is able to live in an environment where he can express himself freely, openly, in an understanding that while you live, others must live also. So there are virtues in as much as I have a, a view about what religion is all about. There are virtues that exist that must be applauded. And it is from that standpoint that I have always engaged with persons of other religions. You will recall many years ago that I was one of the founders of the interreligious organization of Guyana because mm -hmm. dialogue among people of different faiths minimizes the, 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 the opportunity for division, conflict, and wars. In Guyana, you can have at a funeral, then you will see why religion and the diversity that exists must be managed carefully. In the funeral, you might find that the mother or father is deceased. Some of the children are Christians, some are Hindu, some are Muslims, some are Rastafarians, and they all congregate in one space to mourn the loss of a loved one. How do you handle that environment? Which religion is superior to the other in that environment? It's human beings who have their own personal beliefs that are gathering as a family. So respect, tolerance, appreciation for what exists. And in Guyana, we have been able to successfully navigate that environment. Um, I think it is one of the strengths and pluses of Guyana. So yes, despite of my theological um, training, beliefs, and practice, religion has its virtues that um, with all of its weaknesses, it will still enhance society and guide society and create that conscience and moral fabric of society. I know, Freddie, you are a tough cookie, so I will tell you up front, some of the people who have done some of the worst things on earth are people of also religious persuasion. Mm -hmm. So I know where you come from and your university days and all the rest of it, and your theories and all the rest of it, it is a fact but not because one person did something wrong in the name of religion. You must demonize an entire group of people because of that action. That's an individual action. Let's deal with what the religion stands for. So relevance of religion in today's world, I'll say yes. All right, I will um, ask you to take off the minister of religion hat. Let me put on, ask Gilawi to put on your minister hat because the ministry you're in charge of is one of the largest ministries in terms of budget and perhaps one of the most, if not the third or the second most active ministry in terms of what is going on. I will hand you over to Gildari before I do that. Could you please ask the lorry drivers, hundreds of them, to ease on that speeding? I live on the railway embankment and my house is shaking every night. 
<laughs> Thank you very much, dear Freddie. And uh, relevance is everything. Context is everything. If you, uh, good night, folks. If you go into any country, um, uh, you would be amazed either by the airport, by the skyscrapers, by the roads infrastructure that, that those countries uh, would possess. Um, and uh, those are the things why we would visit those countries either as a tourist or whether we want to go shop, uh, the shopping malls or things that attract us. Um, this ministry, the Ministry of Public Works, has uh, almost more, a little more than one fifth of the total budget that was passed this year, uh, over to about two hundred million billion dollars thereabouts. So that gives you an idea as to how uh, much of a challenge that we're going to look at. Because a couple of years back, you would know we did not have the oil money. Um, but before we do that, we need to put a couple of things in perspective. I saw a news article today which uh, talks about a lorry driver. And this is in context of what uh, Freddie Kisun would have uh, been speaking about a little earlier. A man was charged with hitting on a woman, killing her and on at Ogle. And uh, what was significant to me on that story is that he drove a truck, a legend, because he's before the court right now, uh, on license motor vehicle, driving an uninsured vehicle, and an uncertified vehicle. And so he's also facing charges in addition to that uh, fatality. Um, more and more, we see a lot of trucks on these banks, a lot of vehicles, and we see increased incidents of those vehicles involved in accidents, many times fatalities. But we have to put things in context. In a country that is developing, do you complain about the number of trucks on the road? Do we talk about the lack of regulations? What do you talk about? Uh, Minister, you have a, a ministry that is not only spanning uh, the transport division, but the airport, the river transport, and roads and bridges and everything that comes under the sun. I want to ask you, how does the government balance? Uh, do we need more regulations to... And, uh, well, let me put it this way. Do you need more regulations right now to control what has happened, this rapid expansion, because you have to balance that as well as the laws of Guyana. We need strong enforcement of what exists. And yes, we need to have regulations amended and strengthened to suit the evolving um, situation. But they are laws in place. There's subsidiary <clears throat> legislation in place. Right? Um, that can be enforced, for example, speeding, whether it's a truck, a bike, a car, a minibus, it's against the law. There are speed limits and there are zones in which speed limits change. For example, zones where there are schools, the speed limit changes to accommodate the fact that there are pedestrian crossings, people have to cross the road, safety of children are important. The Guyana Police Force has that responsibility under the Road Traffic Act to enforce those laws. What we have, and this is a conversation that must not be treated in a very simplistic manner, the boom, the accelerated development the sheer speed and volume and magnitude of what is taking place in Guyana, that sh shot in the arm of confidence that Guyanese received in 2020 when the PPPC came back to office, has elevated what was a small problem into a big problem. Trucks on our roadways and speeding was always a problem, but it's no longer 10 trucks. It's a thousand plus trucks per day. The ministry has recorded that we have about 2,000 to 2,500 trucks on the East Bank Corridor on a daily basis. Because of the traffic congestion, some of these trucks actually start operating from 2, 3 a.m. in the morning. And I, my understanding of what exists now is that truck drivers are no longer paid daily wages. They are paid per trip. Per trip. Mm -hmm. So it's just the culture of the minibus 
where you have to meet a target and the rest of the money is yours. The culture of the taxi man, where you have to make so much money to go to the boss man and then you have to make your own. The truck, it has now inflicted that same culture and disease to the drug drivers. As many trips, they want to get out, get out, get in, dump, and get back. And the speeding of the trucks have really traumatized a lot of drivers on the road, particularly the female drivers. And I don't know if we are losing our sense of compassion in this country where we don't look out for our women anymore. There are, there are many, many female drivers who have complained to me. When they see these trucks coming, they actually come off the road. Mm. They, they, they are scared. They, they, they don't want to have to tangle with them. Whether it is the articulated vehicles with the 40 or 60 foot containers, the sand trucks, um, the DAF, the twin steer, whatever is the uh, heavy duty um, truck. So we do have a problem there. Now, you would have realized the other day that I um, asked through the Central Transport Unit, which falls under my leadership, um, that one of the things we must address is the covering of cargo in trucks so that while you are traveling, it doesn't fly. It doesn't fly. They break people's windscreens. Pebbles going on the road could cause people to skid off the road. Sand blowing in people's eyes, riding a motorcycle. Um, these are things that we've had to address. And we went with the first approach of voluntary compliance, moral suasion, getting people to adapt to culture. We have to look out for each other. The laws are there. And the police are there to enforce the laws. We have seen some um, development, but we've still we st the law is for the lawless. The law is not for the, the person who's compliant. The law is for the lawless. So while we have people who are compliant, people who are adopting, people who recognize what we're seeking to do is important. We do have those who are reckless, and I can't help but saying let the law deal with the lawless, and we need to see greater enforcement regulations in terms of strengthening and amending regulations, one of the regulations that I think we will have to address is the weight limit. And we'll have to look at which roads can heavy duty vehicles traverse, highways, main access roads. But then we have to put regulations to control community roads. Community roads are not built to the same standards mm -hmm, mm -hmm. as highways and main access roads to fetch the same tonnage. So when a man comes down a uh, highway, four lane highway or, or, or whatever, with um, 60 tons, and then he decides he's going to go into a village street. He's going to work The village work. street is, first of all, narrower. Mm -hmm. So he's going to be end up not just driving on the street, but driving but, on the shoulders. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. When you break the shoulder, you actually start damaging the street because the shoulder is to hold the road together to ensure it properly drains and ensure that the materials that comprise the construction of that um, road is held together, the sand, the loom, the crusher run, the asphalt. When the shoulder breaks, water gets underneath, and everything starts cracking up, and then it's gone. Then, in our interconnection of drainage in our communities, we have these box culverts. We have taken out much of them, and we're now putting in concrete culverts. But when those trucks drive over those culverts, they break them. And nobody knows it's broken. But it's only a matter of time of continual movement on it. It collapses. A big hole opens. We've had that at Mahaika. Um, and people have seen big holes in the road and all the rest of it. But when you really check it out, it's a culvert that is on the knee that is damaged. So you have to raise up the entire road, close off a section, rebuild a, con a culvert, and it has to be done in a manner of an emergency because of the nature of the traffic and the volume that has to pass there. So the conversation must be in Guyana among us as a people. While President Ali is doing a fantastic job at envisioning as well as empowering, because you could give vision, which you don't empower the people right. to do. Mm -hmm. you, you, you're just wasting time. But President Ali has done a fantastic job at envisioning this modern Guyana, transforming Guyana, and he has made 
the the the, the avenues available for empowering. You could get your money from the bank, um, a low cost interest. You could take your title. You could go and get a mortgage. You could build your own home. Young professionals are having their own homes. People are coming back into the country. They're um, taking their family homes and taking it to the next level. Local content, legislation, which one of the things that Guyanese are benefiting from is real estate. People are now trying to put in additional accommodation to get apartments going to rent to people who are coming from the oil and gas. So there's a construction boom. Mm -hmm. So that's one aspect of it. But while we do that, we also have to do it in a sober manner, thinking about the long term. We can't build a road today and somebody because of selfishness, inconsiderate behavior, or just sheer recklessness goes through it and rip it apart, whether it's with a truck, a tractor laden with mud coming out from the back dam, the back dam mm -hmm. a plow that is not properly lift, lifted, that while they're riding, they're, 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 they are also destroying the asphalt. We have seen situations of that. Or some contractor who has an, uh, 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 a contract to do drainage, which is important to keep the road safe, rather than putting the mats for the excavator to walk on the road, he's walking on the asphaltic road with those iron wheels mm -hmm. digging up the asphalt when he's going. Those excavators have mats that you could put for the excavator to walk on. And even if you don't have the mat, you get a piece of one by 12 softwood and you put it there, it will make a big difference. But some people just don't care. No. So and most of these contractors, right? So we, we, we have to get a culture that says, look, Guyana is doing well. I think even the worst critic of the PPP C administration would quietly admit that what we are seeing in Guyana today is unprecedented. Yeah, yeah. Unprecedented. The worst critic of, of the PPPC. And there's a bold vision. There's a fantastic team in place. It's not just one thing that is happening, but it's multiple things that are happening at the same time. Go and do your research. And Freddie is a old, good old researcher. Yeah, Tell me... Good. At what stage in Guyana, on one day, MPTAP ever took in bids for 700 projects at the same time. It happened last week, Friday. 700 roads, bids for 700 roads came in on the same day. Could you imagine the volume, late. Late. The, 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 the volume of bids that will be submitted? One, maybe 30 contractors are bidding on the same road. This are, these are thousands of applicants that are now getting out there, 700 roads that is, that is, the, that, that is coming out, that was closed last week. And that's not the, the, the sum total of the 2023 program. Remember, we got a supplementary. Mm -hmm. And the supplementary, I said to the parliament, the reason why we're asking for more is because we are doing more. Mm -hmm. We have done hundreds already. And because we have... The accommodation to do more we ask for more money and we we're able to do more now i'm, I'm just showing you the, the, the scope Absolutely. at this current time there are probably more than 2500 projects that are being executed alone through the ministry of public works you have a nightmare there in terms of capacity to supervise as well as engineers and clock of works as well it is a challenge and i would want to take this opportunity to highly commend the men and women who serve, because we have quite a number of female engineers, and that they are supported by Clerk of Works and other technical staff who help uh, with the management, coordination, ensuring compliance. And, you know, years ago, the wisdom of the PPPC is paying out now. Dr. Chetty Jagan. Uh, put in place a mechanism that says, look, if a work is to be done in a community, give the community the unpriced bill of laden. They could monitor. The unpriced bill of quantities, sorry, not bill of laden, the unpriced bill of quantities. So the community must be able to have the bill and they must be able to look to see how many loads of sand, how many loads of loom, what width the road supposed to be, the length, 
Are you doing that right now? Yes, we do. Mm -hmm. So while we, and I, I went there to say that while we have challenges in terms of our engineers having to supervise so many projects and clock of works running from one end to the other end to deal with the volume of projects, the communities of themselves have been doing a fantastic job. And you see with WhatsApp, when I get up in the morning at uh, whatever time, the phone is ringing, people are sending images, people are bringing to your knowledge something that is happening. So the, the alertness, the vigilance of our people, there, it, it is helping in Guyana's development and our citizens who participate in that must be commended. So the NDCs, the RDCs, the, the Community Development Councils, and just ordinary citizens who show interest. Um, I saw a video, and my wife liked it. In fact, she called me to see it. You're talking to two contractors in Linden, and this is what you said. I didn't pay for half a load. We have these calling programs and the complaints against contractors. Could you expatiate on either the weaknesses or the or whatever of some of these contractors? You don't have contractors. There is not enough contractors here. Well, what are you gonna do? The, the first thing it wasn't in Linden, Fred. It was Maria. It was, okay. it was, it was Region Eight. Well, you um, remember telling them you know, oh, yes. oh, yes. oh, yes, I remember the story because it went wild on TikTok as well. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And some people from the Caribbean were calling me and asked me to come over and be their minister. <laughs> <laughs> but um, the issue but is... But you didn't pay for half a road. No, we didn't pay for half a road. And your contract was not for half a road. Because what he had done was half the work. He had abandoned the site and he was gone. Now... He abandoned the site? Abandoned the site. There was no... Um, physical activity for months. So he collected and... Well, he would, have, would not have gotten all of the money. Right, right, right. But how could I give the work to somebody else when there's an active contract? Mm -hmm. I have to either terminate. Right. And you, you know, it's a whole right, process right. and it delays development. So what we have, and, and let me just say this, because I hear the complaint about everybody touring a contractor. Yes. And everybody said, this man was a man used to sell bread and now he's a contractor. This why he's to write taxes. <laughs> now, listen to me. That's a good thing. That is a good thing. Yes, sir. I, I, I believe in upward movement. Of course, yeah. yeah. Anybody can become a contractor. Yeah, we had a guest Wednesday who here is a um, well, chairman should, of the private sector commission. He once was a taxi driver. Yes. But, you've got but to reach for the stars. You would, have, uh, you would agree that uh, we cannot uh, divert from the procurement process. No, no, no. no. So I'm saying anybody can become a contractor. And I, I, I'm mm. proud um, to see the volume of women who are now contractors. But as a contractor, you have to ensure you employ and engage the requisite skills. So you might be a businessman, you have the money, you could get the equipment, but you have to get the engineer who could get the job done. You have to pay them, you have to get them. And in order for you to qualify at the National Procurement and Tenant Administration Board, you have to show the CVs. Who can be doing this work? Who are your engineers? What are their qualifications? Years of experience? Who's going to be a foreman? Similar work. You have to state all of those things in your bid. So forget about the name of the person who's the contractor. Let us see who will be doing the work. Because somebody could say, Agile is a pastor. How is he a minister? How is a minister? <laughs> yes. Right? I'm a policymaker. I'm a legislator. I must be able to have in the ministry the requisite skills. My lab must be staffed with engineers who can go out there and test. My design department must be able to design roads, bridges, sea defenses that are resilient, that are cost effective, where economy, effectiveness, uh, and efficiency are uh, hallmarks of ensuring Guyana's development. I must ensure that my engineers who are project managers, my clerical works, are people who could get measurements done correctly so that we don't overpay contractors, so that people get paid for what they do, um, the mix are right, and all the rest of it. So the issue here is execution of contracts must be in keeping 
with standard protocols. We just had a situation where a contractor cast concrete in the night. There was no engineer that was present. And people sent me photographs and said, look, the reinforced steel was not in the 50 meters um, that wow. was cast. And that's what I'm talking about, the vigilance of um, the communities. So break it up. Pretty, Rip it up yeah. because we will not pay you for that. The protocols demand that if you're going to cast concrete, an engineer or a clock of works got to be present to observe and to ensure that you're doing everything in keeping your mix, your reinforcement, and everything. And if you do it without them, we don't pay you. And that is the reality, and that is why the engagement of the society in Guyana's development and the feedback that we are getting, whether it's on Facebook or whether it's on WhatsApp, people writing letters, people coming into the ministry, is so important and much appreciated. And I'm not using this program tonight, Leonard and Freddie, to invite more because it, um, more comments and criticism because we are, we, we, we are already overwhelmed by people's views because people also use that as a way to get personal vendettas against persons yes, that, 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 that they have um, issues with. And we, we, we have that kind of abuse. So sometimes when you hear uh, people abusing, look who turned contractor and they're abusing and, Carl names, uh, Carl names. Uh, and, and so on. It yeah. is because they have also bid for the same job <laughs> and they didn't get through. And they fall in the same category of He's the person. He's not a contractor. He's not a contractor. <laughs> Are you? Me? Uh -huh. You're not a contractor? No, no I, I, I stick with what I know. <laughs> but, but Minister, I saw a story today. Um, a Wakenham contractor, and I want to raise the issue from that. I think it's a Wakenham selling contractor. Um, leg one. Leg one, one sorry. Leg one selling. Leg, leg, leg one the, selling. When but, is but that the, going the to no, no, but the man is saying, when the, is the that contractor is reportedly saying, I receive no money from government, but I know there's a mobilization, there's an advance um, payment oh that you man. receive. Let the man and, just tell the uh, truth. Mr. I don't want to Minister deal. Minister, you got paid, man. Uh, listen, listen, paid. Freddie. No, the no, man no, is no. paid. By the I call. don't want to deal with hard politics tonight to embarrass anybody. Right. This is a 2018 contract mm -hmm. of $413 million. My predecessor of the then government, I don't want to... <laughs> You call it him. I, uh, I call it him. Minister Patterson. Oh, you want Freddie to do the yeah, politics? Minister Freddy. Patterson. That is so Freddie. No. Minister Patterson. A contractor. Who has been testing and found one thing. A, a contractor is supposed to get 15%. Advance. The, the standard bidding document allows for 15% on coastal regions. And you could go up to 25, 30%, depending on what is approved by the tender board for interior locations. This man got a mobilization advance of $199 million on a $413 million contract. 50%. <laughs> right? Now, listen. In this man's contract, he has to drive piles. And he bid to drive the piles. You know what he said to the then government? Your bill did not say I have to supply the piles. So he bid to build a stelling where he has to procure the materials and everything. But the word supply was not included in the bill. So he says, I'm going to drive the piles if you buy them. So there's a delay there. So there's a big argument and a big contention about the piles. Then the barge that he has to put his crane on or his drag line on to drive the piles, it was not stated in the document that you have to get a barge. So he's charging you millions of dollars for the rental of his barge to drive the piles that he got a contract for. You serious? That is the story, sir. Uh, you stop right there, Minister. And then when he's uh, finished driving the pile, because he has to cut the pile to make sure all are even to cast the deck, he said, your bill did not say I have to cut the piles. So pay me to cut the piles. You hear that? This is the, the, the wickedness that I inherited on the leg one stelling. That is why I went there and I said, For not a cent more. Well, now, listen, I don't want, I, I'm not in the habit of embarrassing people or putting people out to bleach in the public. The nation could be assured that anytime I speak about a matter publicly, I've addressed it numerous times privately. I call him to my office. We sat down. He brought his quantity surveyor, 
We had all the arguments. We got to get this thing settled. We got to get this. We got to get it. The people got to get a project. When you think you finish one issue, just the same approach will happen to the next issue. Um, if I have to use floodlights to work at light, the contract did not um, stipulate that I got to work in the night and there's a cost for me to put floodlights, so I want payment for that. My workmen had to come with speedboat from over there because I could get workmen from the man? island. That is the nature. He's not the only one, Freddie Kisson. That is the nature of what we inherited. So when the opposition comes now to say they are attacking contractors, I am very careful and I want to be very respectful. They have no bona fides. They have no moral authority to lecture this administration about who should get contracts. And the gentleman had three contracts when I came in. He had the contract to build this in Cuthbert's Mission Road to Pukuri. We had, to road is not built. we had to terminate it. Do you see, see what's up? We never did it. He had the contract to also build uh, a riverfront revetment at Spikeland in Linden. He couldn't get it done, and he had to terminate it. So the same still, individual. Is he still doing that then? <clears throat> but let me tell you what has happened now. So if it's terminated, he got with a whole set of No, people. I tell him he got to finish his selling. So leg one selling is, 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 is practically finished, but 2% more of the work to be done. So there's a ling span bridge that you have to put in place, install, so that when the ferry comes, excuse me, when the ferry comes in, if the water is low, the vehicles could be able to travel. Yes. And, 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 oh. and the, the man said the bill did not have <laughs> provision for the hinges. Again. The bill did not have provision for the hinges to fit the Lingspan Bridge to the Stelling. So he wants $3.2 million for the hinges. Now we went through all of that. We got the hinges, we got the Lingspan Bridge. He's not setting it up and he's not installing the Lingspan Bridge so that we can get access to use the Stelling until all the other spurious, unjustifiable claims that he would like to make are addressed. And that's what he's saying he's not getting paid. He's not getting paid for spurious claims. But every job that he has done, that he has put in an interim payment certificate for measured works, he has been paid. Well, if you think you're smart, you got somebody smart. But, you, you, but hold on, I'm going to ask because yes. there's a question I was yes. about to ask. Yes. Are we in the habit as a government when you, I don't want to use the word screw up, but when we mess up on contracts, I blacklist you. How many? I blacklist. I blacklist you by writing to the national How procurement. How many? Blacklisted? Many. Listen. Give me a figure. In, in contract management, this is how it goes. You get a contract. You get a letter of poor performance if you're not executing the work. You get, get a letter of second letter of poor performance. Mm -hmm. Get on with your work. You're getting document. A, letter, a third letter of poor performance. Then you get a letter of intention to terminate. Then you get your termination letter. And every time we have terminated, the policy of President Irfan Ali and the PPPC administration Engagement. is to inform the tender board that this is a non-performing contract. You know why you inform the tender board? Because the man must not only get work in your sector, he must not get work in any sector. So the remedy is, is it is it an MP tab that evaluates bits all the um, entity, so they must be knowledgeable that this man didn't only mess up. It, it's not only public works going to reject him, but it must be any work in the government. And we have many companies like that. that and we have office. we have terminated, and we have informed the tender board. Many companies like that. Well, many is relative because if you got thousands of contractors right, right, and you got like right, fifteen, right, right, right. you can't call that many. And um, in in the whole scheme of things, how do you guide against? Um, Gildari has a company being blacklisted and he doesn't open a company. Oh, yes, we've had those smart guys. Oh, you did? Yes, yes, okay. yes, yes. But remember, the company, company must have a principal. We put the wife name in it. Yeah, but <laughs> eventually right. you get around to it. We've, we've, had, we've had people who have been um, terminated and because of poor performance or non-performance and they redo a company and... And then we, we end up seeing who's there, and it's the same behavior. So even if you change your name, you don't change your conduct, your character, it's the same thing, it's the same outcome. 
Um, just one thing before I go on there. We have received complaints. Freddie would have received complaints. So how do you guard against corruption at the level of the supervisory um, personnel that you would have had there? Be it the engineers, the clerk of works, you would look at it. Every Tom, Dick and Harry in the street knows the BMWs, the, the, the vehicles that they drive in, the houses that they live in, the many houses that they own. Have you any mechanism in, 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 in place to make sure that uh, it doesn't get out of hand or it's stopped in its tracks? Well, let me start um, from the beginning. When I was asked to be the team leader as a senior minister at the Ministry of Public Works, one of the first things I addressed, remember I'd served in the Ministry of Finance before and was very familiar with MPTAB and what was happening in terms of contracts. I said, look, let's first of all take the fat out of the bill of quantities. So if an engineer prepare a bill of quantities for a project, Somebody check. before that project is advertised, it is peer reviewed. Mm-hmm. So you can't have excess fat in the bill of quantities because you could you could you could get a thirty million dollar contract, but you only really need about sixteen million or fifteen million to do it. You talking about inflation, inflated, inflated price. cup, inflated prices. Right, right. So that's the first thing that we have done. We peer review bill of quantities. Mm -hmm. Good. Secondly, contractors get paid based upon measured works. Anything that the Auditor General finds after the fact, we have an internal audit department that goes out and audit our projects. So while the contract is building and the project engineer is signing off, IPCs and so on, we have an auditor who's coming behind to check out and see, you pay this man for this, but this not measured works. Mm -hmm. So that is being dealt with um, internally even before after the fact the road is finished building then the auditor general comes with his borehole and all the rest we, 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 we are dealing with that the third mechanism is the various tiers of supervision now contractors know by way of an open door policy that i operate a matter must only remain unresolved for two weeks if there's a disagreement between a contractor and an engineer concerning a design, a payment, an instruction to go forward, no engineer could frustrate a contractor. I mean, not gonna allow contractors to behave in a disrespectful manner to engineers. Escalate it. Mm -hmm. So it either comes to myself, Minister Indar, the permanent secretary, bring everybody in, examine all of the issues. Mm -hmm. Now, I cannot avoid the unscrupulousness of the contractor and the engineer meeting and susuing mm -hmm. and doing something because then I have to become God and I'm not God. I have to be everywhere yeah, yeah. every time. But to be omnipotent. <laughs> but the moment the evidence of that starts surfacing, my auditors are out there to check. And I don't want to use this platform but it does happen but the listen i don't want to use this platform to denigrate or disgrace anybody but we've had to let go mm -hmm. of people who've been found thank you very much because we'll be that talking that checks and balances here because if you don't take that kind of a and when you when you let go and an example is that everybody start pulling their socks up and then sometimes they settle down again and then you have to keep going uh, at it. You had two you wore two hats this evening. Let's put on the, the third hat. The hat of the politician. Am I but, a politician, Freddie? I'm just a person in public service. Well well you elected to parliament. Oh, Once thank you. Elected elected to parliament. Parliament, you're a politician. Um, Dean by Freddie. <laughs> when you meet African Guyanese you're an African Guyanese, you belong to a government that the criticism is they're yes. not doing things to African Guyanese. What's the, I can't ask you about your other colleagues, I'll ask you about you. What's the reaction between you and African Guyanese? I think they're quite comfortable and quite happy. If there's any discrimination at the Ministry of Public Works is in favor of African Guyanese. Let me explain to you. 
you go into Linden and you ask the region and everybody, all the contractors, some 83 of them show up to bid for 49 jobs in a selective tendering process that a man from Borbis could have bid for if he had gone to open tender. But this is only confined to Lindeners. You go to Albaistown and you do the same thing. You go to Buxton and you do 25 bridges with 25 contractors. You go to New Amsterdam and do the same thing. You go to Melanie and take care of everything that is in Melanie and you're creating employment. And the volume of afro guyanese females who are small contractors who are building their own homes, buying their motor vehicle, putting their children through private school. And when they see you, they say, thank you, minister, for giving me the opportunity. Things are working out well because they take their returns and they develop themselves. Who buy a canter um, to do other work? Listen. President Ali and Vice President Jadio receive criticisms from people who, if they check the facts and the data, would run and hide in shame. It is a policy of the government. We have been doing this to help afro Guyanese. Look. You see, when we were build, building Independence Boulevard, we believe got work on Independence Boulevard. The boys from Halbaistong, the people from the area, no contractor complained that a piece of a sack of cement was missing or a, a steel rod was stolen because it's the people from the area doing the work, being supervised by the contractors, and they were quite happy. Then we built the roads, the concrete roads in Halbaistong. Right now, we have 49 concrete roads that are being executed in Linden. Now, here what will be the problem. The regional chairman will gripe at that. The mayor will gripe at that because it didn't go through them. And, and the people of Linden are recognizing it's the PPPC government that is doing that. So the big issue was they didn't consult with us, blah, 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 blah. When we went into Victory Valley, and the people said, look, we're in the mud, we're walking in the mud and all of this. President Ali said, get this done. We took the Rasta man, mm -hmm. the Rasta lady, the people from the community said, you imply 15, you imply 10, whatever the case is. They did their footpath, they cast. It was the member of parliament who was elected to represent the people from the area, went the very same night and tell the people, don't do the work. People chased him and said, don't do the work. This is our benefit. That's got to be figured out. I ain't calling names on your program the tonight, man. Calling I want to be good. You know, I'm, 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 Freddie, you know I'm not always <laughs> this good. You want to be bad. I, you want me to be bad yeah, tonight. Yeah, yeah. I, I should not have said that, yeah. I will try. I will try. Let me But, 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 but let, me, let, let me just say, I have watched President Ali, Vice President Jack Dio, Prime Minister Phillips, and other cabinet members engage the black community, contractors, entrepreneurs, giving them opportunities to make sure that they participate. You know what is it for me to go into boxing on a Sunday afternoon? Sundays is the day when I should be in church. If I finish church and I go up to Buxton, we got the NIS. We got a man to do the procurement training. We got the people from GRA, how to get your compliance, holding your hand to fill up the form to make sure that you could get everything in order to qualify. We have people teaching how to, how to write a winning bid, how to ensure that you could get into the system. And that came as a result of us being in Buxton with Prime, uh, Prime Minister Phillips, um, where the people said they didn't get in work. We call all them. If you're, all contractors come to Tipperary Hall, you don't get in work. That's the cry, right? We go around the room. Did you apply? No. Why are you going to and apply? My papers ain't right. Me and Tika going to get through. So you, ha you have to start dealing with those sensitivities now. Show them how to get the papers right. Hold the hand. We didn't tell them go to town and get a complaint, you know. KGRA. Carry the, the, the NIS people to them to make sure we get them compliant so they could participate. The leader of the opposition is not doing that. If you want to say that you've been discriminated, 
pick up 50 contractors. Let the leader of the opposition or the, 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 anybody pick up 50 contractors. Get them compliant. Help them to bid. And remember, the IPADG was supposed to help people to develop capacity and all the rest of it. Let the people go and bid. And when they get through, then recognize. But if you can't help the people to become compliant, to follow the rules, to understand how to win a bid, and you make a noise, you are just using people as political fodder to enhance your own politics of division and hate where you run into Washington to say discrimination and you don't have no evidence to provide. I'm sure that one of the things that people um, would be complaining about is that why don't they do that everywhere? But we do it. We did it in Crabwood Creek. All the footpaths and the walkways where the people were living in mud. You heard me said publicly, we're taking people literally out of mud. We got the people, we do it. In Region 8 and in Region 9, all the villages, Amerindian villages, get community contracts to build their own roads to connect from one village to the next village. We go in and we supervise, but it's the people doing the work. So it's not just afro guys we're looking after. It's communities that need empowerment. And that is why I said earlier, President Ali did not only give a vision that is causing what is happening, but he provided a mechanism to empower people to get there. Keep your political hat on. You have to answer political questions. Um, what's your analysis of the present leadership of the PNC? Uh, why would I want to be delving into another man's house? It's, 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 it's not my business. It's not my business. Let them you, fight. You act, you would act against that. So I'm just no, you, you said the president leadership of the PNC. The president is in charge of the PNC. The, the present leadership of the PNC. Yeah. No, well, the present leadership is in charge. But leadership, I don't mean one person. I uh, want him to analyze the leadership. All right. I didn't say leader. There's a distinction between I, leadership and I, leader. He doesn't know that. I, I will prefer to deal with the people who are elected to represent them in the National Assembly. And whether they're doing it. And whether they're doing it. Let's start with the leader of the opposition. He's hardly in his seat. At, at, uh, at in, the in Parliament. parliament right? He doesn't control he misses, he misses sessions? several and, and, and many. He, he don't control his team. They're not coherent in their arguments. One will get up and make an argument. Another one will contradict them. It means that they're now doing their research. Uh, they're all over the place. They're looking for some bites. You know the adjective for that is shambolic. <laughs> well, Freddie, are you going to use that? Adjective? No, no, I would not use your it's attitude. It's frightening. It's frightening that we have representatives being paid who got elected based on promises. So, the, 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 the truth about it, I am very concerned that we have people who are elected to represent people's interests and they're more concerned about the cameras as against the content and making progress. Now listen, we were in opposition, and I served in opposition, and you know I was a fierce up in the opposition MP and, 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 and didn't play with scrutiny of the government during the period when we were in opposition, like many others. And you were shadow what? I, I dealt with both uh, finance and public works. Okay. Um, uh, now President Ali was the lead person in terms of finance. The issues that we address as opposition, COVID, we're in opposition. We went to the people and distribute masks. We carried sanitizers without state funding. That's what the opposition was doing. In opposition, we went to the Amerindian communities and helped them to get their development plans in order, letting them know, get yourself in order, we get getting back in government, keep the village economy alive. While they were killing the village economy, firing almost 2,000 CSOs, those CSOs were making about $30,000 um, a month. And when you do 2,000 times 30,000, you know, the volume, what they were taking out of the economy per year, hundreds of millions of dollars. As opposition, we went in there. We worked with the farmers, the sugar workers. We kept their struggle alive. We didn't, we didn't, we didn't let issues die. We represented our people. You can't be a, just a mere rabble rouser 
and making a speech or sitting on, on, on Facebook and making light of something and calling people by false names. People don't respect that. And people want a strong opposition to hold a government Thank you for accountable. Right. People want a strong opposition to hold a government accountable. So when you have spurious, shallow, unresearched, ill-conceived, not well-thought-out arguments that are just coming from all over the place, it don't help. Debate. But you, you, you don't think that theme, that stock record, is has defeated and is defeating the PNC psychologically. How long more they going to keep telling Guyanese that the election they won the election? Well, the people are saying, "Show me your SOPs." Well, Freddie, it looks like in order for you to have been named to represent the PNC at new AFC in the parliament. You have to subscribe to that line that they won the election. You have to deceive yourself into believing that you won the election. Because, you know, you, you have them repeating the same thing. They, I, I, I have other language that I would like to reserve. I don't want, I, I, um, it's not for you to advise the PNC, but this is a different form where we ask, we ask questions. Um, what would you, I, look, how do I say this? I'm still going to say this. Is a journalist in me. What would your advice be to them? Do the work. <laughs> do the work. Do the work. Do your work. You're getting paid to do it. Do your work. Uh, minister... You think new, you think yeah. new leadership would, would... Listen, it's it's the same barrel. No matter who goes there, if you don't change the culture, if your culture of rigging, it, it, it doesn't change. You don't believe that you have to work to win the election or rig it. Why you believe they failed in government? They didn't believe they had to deliver to the people. They didn't believe they had to keep their promises. They didn't believe that they had to improve Guyana's uh, economy. They didn't believe they had to build the roads and modernize Guyana. They believe they could have stay on, st stayed there because they intend to rig an election. If you are a politician and you want to win the admiration of people, you want to win people who didn't support you the last time to come to you, you got to you got to do things to show people, look, we are government, we're going to take care of everybody in the country, and that's where they can't stop President Ali. The man will go 1 o'clock in the morning and meet people who cook in street food. And meet people, why didn't you go? Uh, he didn't tell me he was going to have a gun with him. You like those kind of things. He didn't tell me he was going. If you call Mr. Angel, I'm going out there. You know I'm going to go with him. Come here, you need some good cooking. You didn't have a soup kitchen in Buxton during the bathroom? Yes, yes, yes. Back to it. You have jurisdiction or part of the portfolio that you have in the ministry there is over the airport. We've seen increase in complaints. Not I know that the airport is made up of many stakeholders, including immigration and everything else. Um, how, has there been a concerted effort to deal with the long lines and more personal? You mean at immigration and customs? Yes, sir. But it's not his portfolio. No, but yes, it is my portfolio. I am it's responsible. Stakeholder I am element. responsible for the airport. It's our experience. And I would not run away from what are the realities. I want to remind Guyanese that we were supposed to get new terminal buildings mm -hmm. with expanded footprint, where we got renovations of an old and a little squeaky easy thing. I can't put more desk if I got the space. Remember, we took that thing from a failure and had to bring it back. Mm -hmm. We had to put in the new boarding bridges. We had to get the new corridors to bring in code E, uh, uh, code D and code E um, type aircraft. And we had to put in the extensions. The airline offices in got space. There is congestion. We are completing the commercial building, which would have about 20 concession areas, putting in escalators and elevators and all the rest. It's going to be a masterpiece when we're finished. Work is still going on. So Same contractor? No, not the, the Chinese are already out. Mm -hmm. The Chinese have already finished what they're doing. This is this this is apart from what, what the Chinese amended contract was supposed to do. This is other work. G O G President Ali P P P C mm -hmm. is doing. We must make that very clear. Now, some people didn't envisage that we would have been adding more airlines, so they figured that you know you need an airport. Mm -hmm. Two BB flights, one Liat, and so on. 
the congestion comes four because, flights on the ground. When we got four or five flights mm -hmm. on the ground. And the truth about it, we can get more flights because we are negotiating for more seats, more flights to come to Guyana. Mm -hmm. Guyana must be a tourist destination, where a destination that is desired, and we must have the facilities to bring people in here. So, Minister Ben, myself, the Commission of Police, the Control of Customs, the Chief Executive Office of the Airport have been looking at ways and means how we could manage that in a better way. Now, and that also would have to improve bandwidth because now as you have the machine readable passports and when you put them to the scans, mm -hmm. sometimes that takes a little long if you don't have the um, required bandwidth and capacity to keep the technology. Well, you know that more than Freddie. Freddie say you don't, don't know anything about them fancy technology. I don't believe so. Um, mm -hmm. Our operator said the time has come. you like to ask the minister anything? No, I, before, I will tell you, we got to we definitely go to have the minister, minister back. Um, there's so many things. His is, is, is ministry is so huge, and and uh, public works is always going to be something that we're going to look at. You're always getting cussing because... Of I don't get cussing. The ministry getting cussing? I don't get cussing. You don't get cussing. People admire me awkwardly. Excuse me. <laughs> You got to come in the corner. You got to come in the corner. Admire me awkwardly. awkwardly. That is a, a sit, sit here. I like that. Sit here when you're getting. You're going to see the awkward no, administration. No, no, no. But at the end of the day, at the end of the day, folks, calling, um, the conversation must be had. And I'm glad that the ministers here uh, understand that there are going to be criticisms, understand that we're going to lot them as well. And we have to continue to develop this place. It's the only way we can do that, having conversation, continue to agitate and take it from the um, Minister, so Minister, um, uh, I, let me have my say and then you will close off. And I'm going to end on a light note because I'm looking directly at your hand and the viewers are seeing it. Those are gold. Yes, sir. <laughs> All of them before I got into office. Those are good. This is my signature as a bishop that I've been since 1995. This ban, you will see, if you, you can tell them, it's the 8th of February, 1995. That's the date when I was consecrated as a bishop. And this is a gift that I got from the church. And this is a family bracelet where every member of the family has one um, that it says edge it's the Edge Mountain. And that is one of the world's most expensive watches. <laughs> so it didn't come from any Damara Harbour Bridge or anything? No, sir. No, sir. I, I, I have to ask the question. I, there is nobody in Guyana uh -huh. who I believe will ever accuse Bishop Juan Edgil of taking gifts or demanding gifts from anybody. You have the closing statement. Right? Yes, so... And well, I, well, I know you want to make light of golden bracelets and so on. No, that's, why Fred, to, that's why Freddie went to my go. He knows, no, 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 Freddie no, no, knows me no, with these no, golden bracelets. Freddie and you ain't going to put words in my mouth. Bishop, you have the last. You have the last. You address, address our viewers and me close. First, we want to say thanks for allowing us to serve the people of Guyana. Thank you, Freddie and Leonard, for allowing us to share with the people. We see ourselves as servants. We, I take my job, we take our job in government as serving the people. And we don't see it as a privilege um, that should be exploited. We see it as an opportunity to serve. And we want to thank the people of Guyana for allowing us to serve you to bring about development in Guyana. We will continue to serve. And in serving, we haven't done everything perfect. I will be the first to admit that. The PPPC have not done everything perfect, but the only person who never got burnt is the one who never cooked. The only person who never fell off a bike is the one who never rode it. We are learning, and even when we didn't do everything right, you could be assured that our intentions were good and our intentions were right, because we want to ensure we develop Guyana we prosper Guyana, and we benefit all the people of Guyana. We accept criticisms that are constructive. We want to work with all stakeholders. We want to see a country that is united. The One Guyana platform is something that we believe in. It's a mantra that we adopt, and it is a philosophy that guides our work and our programs. We are committed towards the development of Guyana. 
and the truth about it. Our promises and our commitments that we have made in our manifesto, we have surpassed some of them already. We have done things that we did not promise. We are in our third year and we want to be able to do more. And with the partnership, with the understanding of the people of Guyana, with an engagement that we will continue, we want to make every Guyanese proud, prosperous, and to ensure that we have a united country. Bishop, thanks for being here. Um, when the program is off, you can have a quiet word with Gildari to reco what? recommend, your, ta hands, recommend so. your tailor to him. My hands. tailor? Yes. Uh, this has been the Gildari Freddy Kisun Show. Our guest this evening was Bishop Juan Ejil, Senior Minister of Public Works, and he said he will be back here, give him a month and a half or so to answer he's questions. Committing me now. To answer questions. We had his junior minister for one and a half hour taking calls, and he assured us that he'll be back. He did say it before the program started, give him a month or a month and a half because he's hard pressed. So we know uh, um, uh, that kind of ministry, you'll be hard pressed. So we're expecting him sometime back in November. Thanks for being with us. Our guest this evening was Bishop Juan Agel, Senior Minister of Public Works. Please, if you missed the program, some of it or most of it, you can get it on YouTube right now. Thanks for being with us on behalf of Lenal Gedari and Minister of Government, Bishop Juan Agel. Thanks for being with us. Catch you later. Bye-bye.